Need some water. Water. Good my desert. Okay. Gotta stay hydrated. Got a need for speed. Gotta stay hydrated. Now. Tears for Fears back in the 80s saying everybody wants to rule the world. And I think knitters, well, if we were to write that song, it'd be everybody wants to knit faster. So much faster. Give me all the speed. Want the speed. It's like, take me to the danger zone. All right, I'm mixing up a lot of songs from the 80s right now. <laughs> Point being, oftentimes knitters are looking for advice on how to knit faster and a lot of times what they hear is change the way you knit knit continental knit portuguese instead knit lover knitting i have a video on that knit english style but flick instead of throw so and all those all those can be useful pieces of advice if you're interested in changing the style of how you're knitting but what if you don't want to change the style of how you're knitting there are actually tips and tricks on that apply to every knitter. No matter what style you knit, there are certain things that you can do as a knitter to gain more speed. So hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, give this video a thumbs up, and find out tips and tricks for any knitter to get faster. As always, quick reminder that down in the description box, you will find timestamps to different parts of the video in case you wanna skip around or get back to some tip that I mentioned later on. Uh, of course, I always hope that you'll watch through the whole video at least one time, but sometimes life is happening and you wanna to get to something specific. Also down in the description box, you will find a list of materials and resources that I think are helpful from today's video. Some of these will have clearly marked affiliate links. If you click on one of these links, it'll take you to a shopping website. And if you make a purchase, I might then earn a small commission, which really does help support my channel. Um, it helps me buy materials for review, materials for demonstration, upgrade equipment, and just try to make this as good of a resource as I can for you. Uh, so if you utilize one of my affiliate links or you leave me a super thanks or buy me a coffee, uh, all of it is so greatly appreciated. And if not, that's totally cool too. I'm really just glad you're here watching a video today. Plugs are done. If you've watched any of my other videos about knitting faster, you probably know what I'm about to say. But I gotta say it anyway, because maybe you're new to my channel and you haven't heard my spiel. Here it goes. I think that there's basically two reasons that most people come on the internet to try to find ways to knit faster. And if you have a different reason, please let me know down in the comments. But the two reasons I see are, one, people equate being able to knit with more speed, as in more stitches per minute, as being a better knitter. Or two, they think that being able to knit with more speed or faster will make them a more productive knitter. They'll get more projects done uh, in the year. Personally, in my opinion, being able to knit with more speed, more stitches per minute, does not make you a better knitter. It just makes you a more speedy knitter. And if that's what you want to do, great. That's great. Work on that. <laughs> Achieve the goals in knitting you want to achieve. You know, this is your craft. You get to do it the way you want. In terms of being more productive, I do think that becoming a faster knitter, you can become a bit more productive. You can get through projects a little more quickly. But being a faster knitter doesn't necessarily mean that you're a speedier knitter. And that, to me, being a faster knitter is a byproduct of proficiency and efficiency, meaning that proficiency, that comes with experience and practice. That's something you gain over time as you learn more about your craft and you're able to make better decisions as you go into projects so that, you know, from beginning to end, uh, you make, like, you have to redo less. <laughs> and efficiency is about you know, knitting with more efficiency in your movement, in your selections, your whole process. And by gaining proficiency and efficiency, you gain speed in terms of productivity. So with all that said, with all those caveats, let's get into the pieces of advice that I have. <laughs> All right, 
if you really want to push the needle on your speedometer of knitting, I'm getting very punny today. What kind of needle you use, whether it's metal, bamboo, wood, plastic, carbon fiber, round needles, square needles, all of these can affect your ability to knit more quickly. And that's because different materials and different shapes of needles have different grip on your yarn, just as a matter of speed. You want the speediest knits you can possibly knit, right? You're going to want to ditch bamboo and wood and plastic and knit with metal needles. The fact of the matter is metal needles have the least amount of grip of any type of needle material that you commonly find out on the market. But there is something about this. There is a caveat to this. With more speed comes less control. And sometimes having more control actually makes you more efficient while you are knitting. There are times when I choose a slower needle. Now, personally, wood and bamboo is too slow for me. In fact, I detest knitting with bamboo. It's, it's so grabby, it's so grippy, it drives me a little crazy. But um, I do really love my carbon fiber needles, which have more grip um, than metal needles but not as much grip as my wood needles that I've tried out. So sometimes I will choose to use carbon fiber. I was recently working on this, my Clappity, and this project is knit corner to corner. And when I first started, the wool that I used is a 100% superwash wool. And <laughs> Superwash wool has, is a slippier yarn than regular wool. There's reasons for it. But I was knitting this with my Addy Rockets, which as the name implies, are very fast needles. It was actually too fast. And I had kind of wished I'd chosen a different needle when I first started because I was having to spend a lot of time dealing with drop stitches. <laughs> And I was having to deal a lot of times with just like kind of having to very carefully do my knit because things were just slipping and it had somewhat to do with the nature of how this is constructed because you start with just a couple of stitches in the corner and you do increases. Now once I had more of a fabric to work with everything sort of sorted itself out and it was fine but at the beginning of this project, I probably had a needle that was too fast and it slowed me down. So that is something to be aware of. This is another reason why, by the way, to swatch because you can test out using a yarn, a stitch pattern and your needle and find out if it all works well for you. Um, and even in terms of your productivity. So there are times when using a really fast needle is actually a hindrance experience trying out different fibers with different type of needle is how you start to learn how to make those pairings, how to match a needle and a yarn with a project. That's, that's proficiency. This next tip, I think your mileage is going to vary based on your personal preferences. But if you have not tried knitting, flat with circular needles. I highly recommend that you give it a go. I find that with circular needles, I actually am able to turn my work and transition to the next needle faster than when I work with straights. Now, some of this comes with experience, with proficiency. I've learned how to wrangle the cable on my circular needle. I've learned how to, something that I do when I'm working flat with circular needles is I actually leave the needle in the stitch, the last stitch as I turn it, and then I take it out. And what I have found that that does when I'm working flat is it makes the turn go by more efficiently, the uh, fabric stays under better control, my working yarn ends up in the position that I want it to be in, and that the cable stays pretty well wrangled. I'll show you how this works one more time in slow motion. I'm getting up to my last stitch. So I put my right needle through the stitch, wrap, and then I leave my right needle in the stitch as I turn and then take it out once the right needle has become the left needle. It's a little tough to see because my needles went out of frame, but I have just found that that one little trick with circular needles really helps 
make my whole turn and transition um, when I'm working flat go by very smoothly and very quickly. The other reason, however, that I think that working with circular needles, even when knitting flat, is more efficient than working with straight needles is that it has to do with the weight of the work. Like with my clappity, with larger projects, I find that the weight of the work is better distributed along a circular needle than with a straight needle. The straight needle, all the weight of the fabric is on one side. And so my hand starts getting more tired more quickly. This is something we're gonna talk about more in the video as we go along. But kind of keeping your body and your hands from getting tired is a really important aspect of being able to knit faster. And with circular needles, I just find that my hands, the ergonomics of it, work out better than with straight needles. So yes, I do personally advocate and believe that working with circular needles is more efficient than working with straight needles. <laughs> I utilize all the tricks, okay? I can magic loop. I use two circular needles. I have, I use something called traveling loop. I have videos on a lot of this. Um, all of these videos, by the way, will be linked down below, but anyway. But if you wanna knit as efficiently as you can, as quickly as you can on smaller circumferences, and you don't like nine inch circulars, <laughs> um, DPNs can be really fast. Yes, there's a learning curve to them. Absolutely, it, you know, working with DPNs isn't something where you're gonna see uh, an increase in productivity right off the bat. You gotta get used to utilizing them. But if you do become proficient at DPNs, they are kind of the most efficient way to knit smaller circumferences, whether it's socks or gloves or what have you. But yeah, DPNs. Not everyone loves them, and if you don't love them, that's fine, don't use them. Not saying you have to use them. There's lots of ways to knit smaller circumferences, um, but it is a tool in the toolbox. And if what you're wanting is to be able to be more productive, it's worth learning how to work with DPNs. <laughs> Something I don't think gets talked enough about knitting is that it's a physical activity. We are using our bodies as we knit. I don't know if you've ever experienced this. I know I certainly have. Sometimes I pick up my knitting and, you know, my body just feels a little, my hands feel a little like stiff. And, you know, I start working and everything starts warming up and then I get more efficient. Well, a way to kind of like skip past <laughs> the stiffness when you pick up your needles is to warm up first. I'm gonna have some links down in the description box to some exercises that are good for knitters to kind of warm up our hands and our wrists so that when we do start knitting, we're able to do so more efficiently. So this next tip might seem counterintuitive, but in the aggregate, in the bigger picture, it really works. And that is take breaks. Remember I said, knitting is a physical activity and any physical activity, we start to get physically worn out. And I actually recently started taking this uh, online spinning class with Abby Frankmont, who's like an amazing teacher, amazing. But anyway, in the very first class, we're talking about um, small muscle fatigue. And how do we know that our small muscles are getting tired? Because with our bigger muscles, they start getting tired and we feel it. But sometimes with our smaller muscles, we're experiencing fatigue, but like it, the discomfort isn't so much that we recognize that that's what's going on. So how do you know that you're starting to experience small muscle fatigue and it's time to take a break? Well, usually the way that you know is you start feeling clumsy. <laughs> I know we've all been there. I know I've been there where I'm knitting along and at first it's all great and then I get to a certain point and it's like suddenly my hands don't move as well. My stitches aren't forming as easily. Not everything is flowing the way that it was before. That is a clear sign that I have muscle fatigue and I need to put my knitting down and take a break. That's really important because 
for two reasons. One, it helps protect our hands and our wrists while we're knitting because we need to take breaks. But two, when I have small muscle fatigue and it feels like I'm kind of knitting in cement, that's how I feel, me personally. I start making more mistakes. I start having to undo my work more and it all sorts of becomes kind of wasted time because I'm tired. So this last tip is the one where if, if you were to ask me, Carrie, what is the one tip? What's the one thing that you think people should know about knitting faster? And it would be this, slow down. I know, I know, totally counterintuitive, but hear me out. What I mean by slow down is sometimes we start knitting so quickly that we're not paying attention to what we're doing. And we don't realize until we are five, 10, 20 rows away that we've made a mistake that we've crossed the cable in the wrong direction, that we missed a increase or we missed a decrease or you know whatever it is, whatever the mistake is. And then it's like, okay, can I ladder down? Maybe I can ladder down and fix the mistake that way. No, I can't ladder down. All right, now I have to frog all of this work. And not only is that time that we don't get back, it's kind of disheartening, right? It always feels like kind of frustrating where it's like, oh my gosh. I really have to, I really have to. And a lot of that can be avoided when we get to the end of a row, stopping and looking at what we did and go, okay, is my stitch count correct? Are my crosses crossed the correct way? Is Are things looking the way they're supposed to look? You know, stopping, slowing down, looking at our work as we go along, actually can help us knit faster because we make fewer mistakes. So yeah, slow down to speed up. <laughs> so there it is, those are my top tips. That's not everything, I'm sure there's other things out there, but those are like the top things. If someone were to ask me, Carrie, what are the things I can do to knit faster that have nothing to do with changing how I knit? These are the top ones I would go to. These are the first ones that I would think to tell you. And I would love to hear from you. What are your top techniques, tips, tricks, etc., for being able to knit faster to gain more proficiency and efficiency? And also down in the comments, let me know if you totally disagree with me. It's fine. You can totally disagree with me. A lot of things in knitting are about personal preference. These are some of my personal preferences that I have found useful and helpful. I always like to hear about yours. It's great being able to share each other's experiences and perspectives on all of this uh, because that's how we can all help each other grow as knitters. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If so, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your other knitting friends. Liking videos, sharing videos, and commenting on videos are all great ways to help support my channel. And of course, the most important way to support my channel is to hit subscribe and the notification bell. Hitting the notification bell will make sure that you get alerted whenever I upload a new video or start a live stream. If you'd like to take support one step further, uh, you will find my affiliate links down in the description box, as well as a link to my Ko-fi, or you can leave me a super thanks. Any tips or commissions that I do receive do get reinvested back into the channel. So I have materials for review, materials for demonstration, upgrade equipment, and really it is because of all y'all utilizing my affiliate links or tips and such that has really helped me keep this channel going over the last couple of years. And so I am so grateful and appreciative. And I just thank you so much. You've brought so much into my life and I'm not just talking about like tips and everything. I just mean like social. You brought a lot in my life and I'm very grateful and very appreciative. So thank you so much. But most importantly, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you have a wonderful day, evening, weekend, weeknight, whenever you may be watching this. And as always, happy health and happy making. Bye. <sighs> <laughs> Just, ah, 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 ah,
gonna knit this at the speed of light. I wanna knit in the danger zone. Oh, by the way, before I forget, at the end of the video, there are a couple of video suggestions if you like to keep watching videos with me or of me, because I'm not with you in your visit anyway. But don't forget, down the corner, there's a picture of me. If you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the picture and you got one more chance to subscribe to my channel before this video ends. So, who's gonna hit that? Who's gonna click? Who's gonna click on the subscription button? That's too much. That was too much. Pushed it too far. Pushed it past the danger zone into too far. 